Hello, Angie. Welcome to the Speaking Evaluations. Oh my God, I am so sorry that I am just a tad bit late. But man, you know what? I'm here and I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So I'm very excited about this because you're not exactly sure how these speaking evaluations work. Well, I think the software has made it so much easier to see, you know, your repetition, to see where your transitions are, to see, you know, how much time you have left, how much time you spent on one specific area in this specific area. In addition to that, I'm going to do my note taken along with the speak, the original speaking uh from each uh what is i'm sorry the original audio from each of the speaking questions so again this is going to be really cool for you because you're going to be able to see how this works and let's see how you can improve this is the biggest thing right we have to understand how you can improve so we're going to go over the part four question first okay so speaking question four and as you can see in the software to the left it says snow avalanche okay so what I have here is you are obviously the speaker, right? And so if you can see here on the document, it shows exactly when you go into your first big detail, which is at the six second mark. After that, you give a couple of, well, a few words, including the article at the 16 second mark. And then there's a little bit of delay, perhaps. And then it goes into 19 seconds and et cetera, et cetera. So before I even get into that, I want to see what details you were able to get down, but I need to first take those notes. And that's what I'm going to be doing on the video. So again, mainly these evaluations are what, $4 each, because obviously it takes time. I have to do the video response. I put this in the software. I do the note taken. I walk you through the process and I give you a lot of feedback, right? But with the Patreon badge, you got all of them for free, right? For the first four. So nonetheless, let's see. And I hope that this is of great service. So without further ado, man, let's get right into this. So I'm going to press play. Snow Avalanche, by the way, is one of the hardest goddamn speaking question part fours or speaking question fours you'll ever do in your entire life. So do not stress about how difficult uh it was again they say that on the toefl exam it's going to be much easier you know i've heard this from some of my uh students who are from different parts of the world uh but it's always good like i've already told you to train hard so the test could be easy okay keep that in mind all right so here we go look at my note take it look how i compartmentalize everything all right here we go okay as we mentioned in the previous lecture, an avalanche is a mass of snow, rock, ice, soil, and other materials that slides down a mountainside. So what are the two main types of snow avalanches? As you can see from the textbook, one is called slough and the other is called slab. Let's look at the slough avalanches first. So what is a slough avalanche? Well, essentially, a slough avalanche is a small slide of loose snow sliding down a mountainside. It occurs when the weak layer of a snowpack is on the top. So when the weak layer breaks, only a small amount of snow that is on the top of the snowpack becomes unstable. It then starts sliding down and fans outward as it descends. Now, as I just said, a slough avalanche is small and loose. So it's much less dangerous than a slab avalanche. Few injuries or fatalities actually result from slough avalanches. On the other hand, slab avalanches are much different from slough avalanches. They occur when the weak layer of snow lies lower down in the snowpack. This weak layer is covered with other layers of compressed snow and rock. The avalanche happens when the weak layer breaks. This allows all of the snow and rocks on top of it to slide down the slope, breaking into smaller and smaller pieces as it falls. Some of the pieces rise into the air as a moving cloud of icy particles. The cloud races downhill at very high speeds, so the thickness and speed of slab avalanches make them a huge threat to skiers, snowboarders, mountaineers, and hikers. No borders, uh, mountaineers, and hikers. Who cares? So you can see 
Obviously, I do not remember. I, for one, do not give a damn about the misspelling because if I go back and try to spell it, especially for you, while you're taking notes, you are going to fail, okay? Do not worry so much as long as you understand what you're trying to say. So when you're writing, it's completely different from me typing. For me typing, it's really good. So I'm hoping probably, you know, uh, later on this year, I'll be able to show people how I write if I have like three cameras and an iPad. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but we'll see how that goes. But anyways, okay, so here we go. What we have here, Miss Angie, we have the opening remark, okay? Then we have you, all right? So here we go. What I had written down and what you should start off with is, of course, the lecture is about snow at, I'm sorry, avalanche. Oh my God, I'm just misspelling all over the place. My nails are too long. It's about snow avalanches, which are a mass of snow, rock, ice, soil, and other materials. Oh God, I hate it. Materials that slide down the mountain. There it is. There are two types of avalanches. Slough, although you probably won't know, know exactly what the hell, you know, and how to hell, how the hell to spell it, but that's all right. If you want to put S-L-U-F-F, -F, who gives a damn, right? This isn't a writing test. So slough and slab. Now I put slough as in O-U-G-H. Don't know what the hell that means. I thought that was slough, but who cares? But then you're going to go into the bulk, right? So you have your two types and then you're gonna put your linker in where you see the lines on the screen. All right, this is exactly how you're gonna do your speaking question part four. Now, looking at what you had said, let's hear what you had to say as well as listen and you're going to see the ticker go Okay, here we go. Dangerous and can cause oh, fewer no, fatalities. Gotta... The lecture is about the snow avalanche and its types. An avalanche is a, is a mass of snow, rock, ice, and other materials that slides down the mountainside. The first type is the slough avalanche. It is- Excellent, okay. That was a good, uh, that's exactly almost identically to what I had said. Now you could see here where there was a little bit of repetition. So you said the lecture is about the snow avalanche and its types, okay, and avalanches. See, snow avalanche, you said it's types, but then you said avalanches again. Also, you said is, is, back to back. So by seeing this, you're probably saying, oh my God, this is awesome. Because now you're aware, damn, there's a lot of repetition that's happening. So these are little things that you can get obviously better at, right? So you went on to say it is, uh, you said massive snow, but actually mass of snow. No problem, it's all good. Now, if you're unaware of that, just say which is snow, rock, ice, and soil. Drop the whole mass if you need to, okay? But then you went on to say rock, ice, and other materials that slides down the mountainside. The first type is the slough avalanche. Excellent, so you go into it, okay? Because you already mentioned the two types, so you don't have to say two types again. You go straight into the first type, which is the slough avalanche which is, and you go on to say, let's press this. It's a small slide of loose snow sliding down the mountainside. It has a weak layer of snowpack on top. And when this breaks, it slides down the mountain, but it is, but it is much dangerous and can cause fewer fatalities. Okay, okay, now, as you can see, oh, I love this. Okay, you did good, all right? Because look at my notes, here are my notes, okay? It's a small slide of loose snow sliding down the mountain, weak layers on top. When it breaks, only a small amount becomes more unstable, then starts sliding and fans outward as it goes down. It's much less dangerous than the slab, few injuries and fatalities as a result. Now, that's almost, you got everything because you said it is a small slide or it is a, yeah, yeah. I literally had written that too. It's a small slide of loose snow sliding down the mountainside. It has a weak layer of snow packed on top. And when it breaks, it slides down the mountain. But, and I love it, you used the contrast saying, but 
it is much less dangerous, but you also say, but it is, but it is. Repetition, all right? It is much dangerous and can, you made it sound like cost. So you're actually looking at the transcription and it says cost. It heard you said cost. So just imagine if this is almost the same thing that they're going to use to grade your TOEFL, that could be a little bit of a mispronunciation. So there's cost and cause, cause. That's, I'm, no, I, again, I don't want you to practice cost and cause, okay? <laughs> because uh, you're probably not even gonna use that in your TOEFL coming up soon, right? And so what I wanted to just obviously show you that can cost fewer fatalities. The e, the e speaker, e reader, whatever that thing is going to grade you're speaking might pick that up and it might say, oh, mispronunciation here. Just saying, wanted to show you. Now, you go into the second type and you outline that very perfectly. Here the it is. The second type is the slab avalanche. Its weak layer lies at the bottom of the compressed layer of snow and other rock materials and when this weak layer breaks it results all it results to all of the materials on the top layer to slide down the mountain and break into smaller pieces okay now there was a little bit of confusion i see there okay you said and when this weak layer breaks now don't worry so much about the reader it picked it up as w-e-e-k but weak and weak, those are, what are those? Homographs or homophones? I can't remember. The, the hamas, they always get me just confused. Um, but nonetheless, it says comma, it results all, it results to all of the materials. Okay, so let me see if I could break this down for you. It's weak layer lies at the bottom of the compressed layer of snow and other rock materials. And when this weak layer breaks, all of the other materials on the top layer slide down the mountain and break into smaller pieces, okay? Now, this is exactly what I had written down. So look, what I, look at what I wrote down. Weak layer cover with other layers of snow and rock. When weak layer breaks, all snow and rock slide down the slope, breaks into smaller pieces as it falls, as you stated. And then it rises in the air as, move, as a moving cloud of icy particles. Now, I typed icy as in the ice cream, I-C-E-Y, who cares? We don't care. We want to take notes as quickly as possible. And after that, the thickness and speed make it a huge threat to skiers, snowboarders, mountaineers, and hikers. <sighs> Do you get what I'm saying? So in the last part, you said... Which is more dangerous and can cause more fatal fatalities. Okay, so what do you see here? You're gonna be able to look at this screen. You're gonna be able to look at this video and ask yourself, huh, all right, Arsenio, I'm seeing your notes. I see what I left out, okay? I see a little bit of mispronunciation. And again, you stopped at the 53 second mark considering that you need a minute and I tell my students, to always stop above the 57 second mark. Make it long. So what could you do better next time? Like what notes did you miss and how did you miss them? Because it looks like the last little boats, the last little bit of notes you may have taken were into smaller pieces, which is more dangerous and can cause more fatal fatalities. Now, okay, fatal and fatality, you see what I mean? Okay. You're looking at it, but now you're like, okay, okay, Arsenio, I get it, I get it. And it's not always that I know you, you're like, oh my God, I need, oh, I'm not that good, I'm not that good. No, you're good. This is one of the most rewarding things you could ever do. And this is why I love doing these evaluations because now you are completely aware saying, what could I buy at it more? Oh, it rises into the air as a moving cloud of icy particles, the thickness and the speed. Those are two content words I had written down, thickness, speed. Huge threat, skiers, snowboarders, we don't have to write down all the plural countable nouns, but that's something that I probably may or would, would remember to fit in when I do my speaking. It would come up at the end. So thickness and speed make them a huge threat to skiers, snowboarders, mountaineers, and hikers. See what I mean? <sighs> so in saying that, this is what the speaking evaluation is. So if you go through this, what I want you to do as your homework, 
I want you to go through this video and I want you to give me five things that you can do better at next time for your speak at part four, because this was an absolute revelation for you. Now, again, I still have to do three more and I was thinking about doing like all of them, but I realized that one was already 15 minutes. Like I told you, this is why, you know, I put them at like four, you know, $4 per evaluation because boy, you can imagine if I get 20 evaluations, holy goodness gracious, it's crazy. So anyways, um, yeah, but in saying that, this is exactly what I wanted to show you. Um, and it, it, it's, a, and it's a massive amount of awareness that you're able to look at, take a step back, look at both of my screens, look at my notes I had taken down, look at what you had said, look at your repetition, maybe some of the stopping, some of the words didn't come through, the mispronunciation, um, ellipsis, and again, for the most part, your structure is good. The, your, 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 your cohesion's okay. I would like you to put a little bit more words in there that could help it free flow, right? So again, like me, much less dangerous than slab. Okay, we're comparing the both, uh, different language. When, subordinating clause, okay, thickness of them, make them a huge threat. There are a lot of different things that we could put in to make that better, right? So I want you to write five things. Tell me, write up a report or whatever it may be and tell me exactly how you can make that better. So again, I got three more that I need to send to you. So stay tuned.